So last week I asked an AI to generate YouTube video ideas for my friends. And this is what happened. In this video, I take my friends Annie Long and Natalie Lin, who are popular YouTubers, to see if this AI can give them more viral video ideas. The way it works is vidIQ, which is the AI tool, will generate daily YouTube ideas. Then I'll be presenting to the creator four to five video ideas that are my personal favorite. And lastly, the creator is gonna grade the video idea from a scale of one to 10 on how likely they're gonna post it. Well, let's get started. Yo, what's up? Hey, Hello. Jane. So Natalie, you make YouTube videos, so tell everyone what type of videos you make. Oh, I don't know how to describe them. <laughs> um, they're kind of like a mix of filmmaking and vlogging at the same time. I know that's the best way I can explain it. I would describe my content as kind of like in two ways, like as almost a self-help coach for teenagers my age, but also I'm documenting my own self-development journey. Where do you get your video ideas? The main way I get content ideas is thinking back to what I've enjoyed seeing in other people's. So let's say I'll have just 50 ideas from my YouTube watch history of videos I enjoyed. I typically don't take all those 50 ideas because it works for their niche, but it doesn't work for mine. But the ones that do, I think about not necessarily how I can change the idea, but how I can make, maybe add something or add a certain depth that the video is missing. My head, my brain, I don't know. I just kind of come up with it as I go or get some inspiration online. Have you ever had an AI give you video recommendations? I have not. I didn't even know it was a thing. Well, here we are. All right, the first one. Taking myself on a date alone. Dude, yeah, 100%. <laughs> really? Yeah, 100%. I oh, love that already. It's like personal. It's not screaming at me to click it, which makes me want to click it more. Ooh, tell me more about that. So when you make titles, you don't like it to be overly clickbaity? Yeah, I think it's kind of like reverse psychology sometimes when thumbnails are like too clickbaity you're obviously gonna know whereas like that just, it doesn't seem like you're, he's trying to like prove anything i took myself on a date alone and it makes me interested to know what he did so the first video idea is titled productive reset day i actually think this one's like a 10. i think it's something that can be very like easy to multiply i feel like that's a big thing creators like let's say you're making two videos per week you're going to have to be able to have this engine of video ideas like you could literally make my productive reset day video like once per month or even make a series of it for example a day in my life video i found doesn't really do well like even like repeating it so i feel like my productive reset day that already gives people that insight of like, oh, I'm going to be motivated by this. So like, I'll probably make this video like next month. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, starting in strong. The next one, are you ready? A little different, a little different vibe, but something that might be a little cinematic. If I had only known. Yeah, I definitely think I'd click on it, but I don't know if other people would because it's more like mysterious and like open for interpretation kind of right it's a little hard to understand huh yeah i think people who like if someone's trying to attract an audience that wants to like read the deeper meanings to things that's a good title but like it's definitely a little bit mysterious and less get to the point at first how would you rate it probably like a seven. Oh, i'll take that we'll take it we'll take it ai one for the ai two for the ai this one it's funny this is like a TikTok meme like that girl so i would say for this video it's probably a three like i don't want to sacrifice my brand for trends the whole term that girl just like makes me cringe i don't know i don't i don't think it's like a bad morally it's just i've seen like a lot of teenage girls do that and i i don't want to make myself so different like from the niche because i want to be able to reach that niche but i don't want people to like just sort me in that category i don't know i've just I feel like it's just not on brand because I think productivity is more than that. I see. So you're, yeah, I, I would, I would understand if you're gonna move away from that trendy, like over, not overdone, but yeah, basically like a little bit more uh, mainstream look. So I could totally see where that comes from. All right, next one. I know you made a video about being a filmmaker, but I think something would be cool is like maybe an updated version. This one suggested my YouTube workflow. Yeah. Um. Okay, personally, I wouldn't title one of my videos that, but I do know that that is like a, a niche on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that that would do terribly. I don't know, I do think it lacks some sort of like personal information or like maybe like an emotion. It's not really bringing out any emotion. How would you rate it? Probably like a three or four. Okay. Personally, I don't know, but I do know there, that there that is a niche on YouTube and people would probably click on that. I just probably wouldn't personally. All right, we're gonna mix it up. So okay. this is a little different. The vidIQ was recommending to me 
a video. I know you made a video about swimming at 6 a.m. I know you're not on the West Coast, but when you were here, one thing you could have done is made a video called surfing at 6 a.m. for a week. Mm. So I feel like this one, I would say it's a seven because of two reasons. I would say that one, there's a high barrier of like, okay, I'm gonna execute on this idea because it's just like logistically finding someone to teach you how to serve. Also, since I don't live on the West Coast. Number two, I would say that not everyone associates surfing with productivity, but if someone suggested this video to me like from AI, like I wouldn't be like, oh, why would you suggest that, you know? I think it's just more like psychological stuff that I'm assuming. Like I would have to validate that people don't find surfing like productive. <laughs> I think that's a good point though. It's like your channel has a certain value, right? And you have to stick to that value and maybe certain activities, although it makes sense and it's like for other channels, it might do a lot of views. Like does it resonate with your current audience? But we'll take a seven, that's not bad. This one I thought was kind of interesting. I know you do a lot of story times about bad experiences. Not trying to forecast your next bad experience, but <laughs> the worst experience I've ever had, dot, dot, dot. Hmm. I think I would take out the clearly in the title, but the okay. worst experience I've ever had is definitely good. Really? Yeah. How would you rate it if for your next adventure when you get stranded on a mountain? Um, <laughs> the eight. Eight? It's open for interpretation, but it definitely like makes a statement at the same time. I'm gonna go with my next one. I think it'd actually be really cool if you talk about your startup school experience. I think this one would be a two because of the title probably. Like I think maybe I could frame it in a different way. I try not making things that are super specific. So I've actually like kind of wavered before if I should make a dedicated book recommendation video. And I know it shouldn't all be about the views, but I just think there's a really like high barrier of entry for people to click on that video because I feel like you already have to be motivated like to read. If I were to like frame more around this idea, I might do like a day. Mm, I don't even know if I do a day in my life at startup school. Oh my goodness. Really? I well, think, I feel like some of like, content that's a little higher barrier to entry maybe it's not as suitable in an eight minute video but maybe like a short and i feel like on tiktok i'm also more likely to experiment because i just don't like feel that much um weight i guess on there but i don't want to fear like making too specific content so definitely it could just be like a psychological thing that i need to get over but that's just my rating for where i'm at now so this is vidiq this is what it looks like so it generated 10 video ideas one of them was going to be story time almost went to jail i hope that never happens for you natalie I really hope. Foreshadowing or something. <laughs> I would probably do some dumb shit, like stuff that I wouldn't even know that's illegal and I would somehow get arrested for like. The AI is so good. It not only predicts the video ideas, but her life. <laughs> it's the future, it's a, it's psychic. Oh my gosh. Well, how, what's the likeliness of that you would post something like this? <laughs> like I would definitely not post something like that. I can see why people would click on that. I just personally would not title one of my videos like that. All right, last one. So I know that this is very specific too, but I've seen this video pop off recently and I got it got recommended. So this one is called My YouTube Workflow While in School. That's something interesting that I think your life is unique upon. Like you are not only in school, but you also make content and you balance both very well. Yeah, I, I like the idea. I think that I probably do this video idea but maybe change up the title a little bit and structure it differently. What I really like to do is if a video idea may not be super fascinating, I just try to jam pack a lot of content and like make it short, you know, so it's at, it's at least moving. So I would do like every single week and like while I'm doing stuff for YouTube or like I can even like record homework stuff. I could do voiceover style or like even just vlogging too about what I'm doing, put a graphic of my schedule, put it like a time log. So I feel like I wouldn't for example, make certain segments on one, filming, editing. Also, since I have an editor and like for Instagram and TikTok or like I've been trying to hire that out more, like I don't want to do a video that um, seems like, since it's a lot of delegation work, I don't know if that's a creative like thing that people want to see. Maybe people want to see actual like editing time lapse. I would say A6. Obviously you are killing it on the back to school keyword, so keep doing that. But these are video ideas for you to, I think these are pretty like evergreen, so Whenever you're out of content for back to school, maybe this is something you can take a look at. I really liked it. Like, I feel like this compared to what other professionals like have given me for video ideas, like I would say it's better. Dude, it was honestly a lot better than I was expecting. I was nervous. I was like, shit, like, am I gonna have to like fake a like nice reaction or something? <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely like, they're, they're really good, honestly. Aside from the, my YouTube workflow, that's the only one that needs some work. But even then, like there is a certain type of 
niche that that would fit into, so. Okay, so I was pretty impressed. And I actually did this to my own YouTube channel. I use Daily Ideas, which is the AI tool you can actually use to generate YouTube video ideas to help you go viral. And um, I kind of like them. They just suggested me a video called Why Your Biggest Competitor Is Not In Your Industry. And although I might not use exactly that framing or that title, I like the way they phrase the words. So for example, say I'm making a video next week about Emma Chamberlain and why she's so successful and you shouldn't compare yourself. I could use the way this title is framed and say, why your biggest competitor is not Emma Chamberlain, right? Because I like the way the word is phrased. It's a very eye-catching, curious statement that will drive clicks. So for my channel, I would save it for the next time. If you get the premium tier of vidIQ, it literally gives you 50 daily ideas. If we go by the luck of, you know, Natalie and Annie, with 50 video ideas, at least five to 10 of them will be something you can actually use and create with, which is pretty impressive. I know I'm sponsored by vidIQ all the time, but it's because I genuinely use this tool. I have been using them since I was literally 17. My friend Ryan Trahan showed me this tool and yeah, I just love it so much. And their new daily ideas feature just came out. So you guys should check it out. Use the link in my description to sign up for vidIQ. Anyways, shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. Comment below your favorite video idea from today that you want to see Natalie and Annie create. Other than that, let me know if you have any questions. I love you guys so much and see you guys later.